Hi, my name is Danielle, and I'm going to demonstrate how to set up for a SPEC CT acquisition. So this is our nuclear medicine camera, but this one actually has a CT as well, which um, is right, right here at this part. And we use SPEC if we want to get kind of a 360 degree view of the anatomy that we're looking at. And when you add the CT portion on, you can actually see the anatomy and you can use those images. So that allows you for the greatest localization if you're looking for something really specific. When you're gonna put your uh, patient on the table for this, you wanna make sure that whatever anatomy you're looking at is between these yellow lines here on the table, uh, just because those are the limits for the CT on this machine. Now I'm actually gonna put a patient on the table. So I've already put my table extender here on the bottom. And that's because we're going to have our patient kind of low on the table. We don't want them to be too pale. And as you see here, it's going to help us. So notice I laid the um, pillows sideways. That way they won't stick out off the ends and there's no chance of them hitting the camera heads while they're rotating. Since we're going to be uh, looking at her abdomen area, now she's going to put her arms up over her head. So what's really important um, for this is that the arms need to be in very tight. So once we get to the CT portion, the camera heads are going to spin pretty fast. I don't want any chance of them hitting uh, any part of Tracy or her elbows while we're doing that. So the next thing I'm going to do is get my patient in position. Now normally here I would look at the P-scope to get the anatomy that I want. Um, if I want to look at the liver or the spleen, for example. Tracy doesn't have any radioactivity in her, so we can't actually do that. So I'm just going to Once I'm ready and in position, I would start the acquisition on my uh, computer over here. Now this uh, this this camera um, it begins with the spec first, and then the CT portion comes after it at the very end. There's a little bit of a pause between there that lets you select when to start the CT. I want to make sure my patient doesn't move at all in between the spec and the CT. Otherwise, the two images will not align properly. So I've already started my spec acquisition. But as soon as I do that on the computer here, it asks me to choose the CT limits as well. So I open up these bars. If I want the whole, the whole area of the region of interest, or I can tighten them up a little if I'm just looking for something specific. This is our P-scope here. So obviously if we had a patient that had some activity in them, you'd be able to see the anatomy specifically. And when I'm finished with that, I'll choose accept and the acquisition begins. So before I actually start the CT, I want to make sure that anybody in the room, if the patient has some family members with them, I want them to leave the room just so there's no unnecessary exposure to them. I'll also close the door so nobody will walk in. Outside of this door, we have a sign that lights up when the CT is actually going to make sure nobody walks in as well. At this point, our spec acquisition has completed, but the CT is ready to begin. I want to remind my patient what's going to happen and tell them not to move at all in between the two acquisitions. I also want to make sure that if they have their arms up, they want to have them in very tight so there's no chance of their arms hitting the cameras. So over here on our acquisition station, it's going to ask me to start the CT. I can't actually start it on the remote. I have to start it right here. As soon as I start that, I'm going to get behind my shield. 